Hello and welcome to another episode of the Uncommon Energy Podcast, and not just any episode, episode number 100. We appreciate everyone sticking with us for so long, and we look forward to another 100 episodes of the Uncommon Energy Podcast. But this week, we're going to be talking about some new stuff that's happened in the community. First off, a Limitless Deck Builder just launched by Robin Schultz, of course, the webmaster creator over on Limitless tcg.com one of the best websites in the entire game we'll talk about that a little bit we will talk about some of the new cards that have been revealed this past week our thoughts on them if we think they'll be any good or not we'll of course have everyone's favorite segment guess that flavor text and i've got to admit i've seen a lot of guess that flavor text hate in the comments section recently on the youtube video totally <laughs> unfounded guess that flavor text the real uncommon energy fans know Guess that flavor text, the best segment of the podcast. Uh, then we'll, of course, have our new weekly segment for the next couple of weeks, the City League Watch, where we look at the results from some of the recent City Leagues happening over in Japan. And then we're going to wrap up this week's episode by talking about the Goyanya Regionals results that took place this past weekend. Azul reacted to those tournament games live so we'll get his kind of insight on some of the big things that happened and we'll look at the results and some of the crazy decks that did well spoiler alert cloth's best ever tournament finish we'll talk about <laughs> all that and more and then of course have our bonus episode over on the patreon if you want to get a little bit more content from myself and azul every single week the best place to do it is over on the patreon patreon.com slash uncommon energy podcast my name is Chip Ritchie, and I'm joined here, as always, this week for episode 100 by Azul GG. What's up, Azul? How we doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Have people actually hating extra on the, <laughs> on the Maybe just like one or two more comments than normal. There's probably like yeah. one comment a week or so. But like, I think someone this past week literally commented um, something like, they they commented like this comment to get rid of guess that flavor text or something like that. Like it was massive hating going on. <laughs> I'll see if I can find the exact comment. Yeah, I didn't really read too much of the comments. I usually like read the comments like every week, you know, a couple mm -hmm. days after. But I didn't read the comments at all on this week's episode. I don't think so. I didn't look at that, look at them at all. Um, but uh, yeah, another kind of a. Uh, same old week for me did watch the Guyan the Guyania regional championships over the weekend and actually something you just mentioned that made me stop and think I was like is this actually cloth's best it is like you said it was but is it actually like for sure like in all the tournaments because one thing I actually like that kind of just made me think about it like one thing that made me think about is like what about all the because like the tournaments that we don't look at as much like specifically here on the podcast or in general is like all the um all the tournaments in like uh you know like taiwan and all this stuff like that so i always like stop and think about those and i feel like in the past which i think like not rightfully so but like we just didn't have information on them as much like they were never we don't, like people don't treat them or like there was a little bit less as, like, weight given to those tournaments for yeah sure. and people didn't even like think about them as like major tournaments kind of in the scene or i guess for where we are obviously for where they are if you're playing in the, the regional championships in like indonesia or uh the philippines or whatever that um that have been happening like recently <clears throat> Obviously, to them, they're like major tournaments, but like for for people, for the rest of us, you know, who mostly play in the the TPCI um, areas uh, or controlled tournament areas, you know, we never really like had much information or really thought about those kind of tournaments very much. And then even Japan for a while, we just didn't have that much information on. But then these last couple of years, we've been getting like so much information about like everywhere. It really feels the game feels so much more global um, now. Well, I mean, more than it ever has been in such a big way where it feels like almost like the we're not on the same circuit but like feels like we're almost like all connected uh in that way of like more you know the information share is just so much higher you know what what they play and what we play it influences each other at such a greater rate now it was just yeah uh, just a thought no for sure i definitely feel that like those tournaments are definitely they, they feel much more relevant to our yeah. ever-changing metagame than they have in the past and um, like, I mean, I feel like there's always been some decks that pop up every once in a while at those tournaments that we hadn't quite thought it was, did water box come from one of those Southeast Asia tournaments back in like 2016, that was a deck Maybe. that like wasn't really popular early in the season kind of popped up. Maybe it came from like one of the European national tournaments, actually. I don't remember for sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's always been a little bit of an impact, but definitely more so recently. Uh, and yeah, I think definitely a good shout there um azul but yeah 
I was tuned in a little the... bit, saw the finals match. Watched you watch the finals match. Ever entertaining as always. Some crazy things happening there. It was definitely exciting uh, overall, especially like uh, Marco's matches in general. I was kind of disappointed when they chose to stream the top four matches they chose to stream, but it was actually a really good set. Um, it was it was like, but it, it felt kind of weird. It was like we just had seen Ricardo play with the Backscalibur deck on stream, and then they were like, we're going to put Ricardo back on with Backscalibur up against Marco with the control, generally an unfavorable matchup. Um, and it's like, we're not going to show Cloth Palkia. I was like, how are you not going to show Cloth Palkia in this situation? That like, that's ridiculous to me. Yeah. Like, uh, but it ended up that is really interesting set. too because you wouldn't want to stream the same side of the bracket twice especially in a matchup that is assumedly unfavorable yeah. for one side whereas like cloth palkia who knows how that matchup goes apparently someone told me in my chat though that like the the limitless tournament data was like very favorite for palkia which kind of makes sense there's no way for them to want to kill palkia yeah. that can give you a pretty big edge i guess overall but you had a ton of fun uh restreaming that it definitely made me think conversation kind of came up and we talked about that a little bit on my stream was just like i mean it's great that um well, one thing, like, I, I, there's a lot of people who are, like, ignorant to what's happening, but it's, like, people are, like, uh, you know, the quality of the stream is obviously not up to the same level as, like, regionals in Europe, yeah. in North America, and people are ignorant to the fact that that's because TPCI is, like, fully funding the streams everywhere else in the world besides, like, the Latin American ones, and Kobag is going out of their way to at least put something out there, yep. which what Kobag is putting out there is what we used to have in North America and yep. in Europe uh before tpci kind of stepped up and took over the only real point of like really high quality streams that weren't being run by tpci was like last season in europe the limitless limitless crew was putting those on uh putting the production of those on um not tpci and that was like matched in quality to what tpci was doing in north america but before that it was all grassroots limitless was doing the european stuff you had like critical hit and um critically i think there was someone else right or my was it just critical hit there was a um, few. There was definitely a few. Yeah, doing like the North American stuff. Um, and they were basically comparable to what Copag is doing with the Latin American regionals. And that's what we saw this weekend in Guyana. So like just to kind of put that out there so everyone understands, like they're doing something without being provided anything. So very least having at least what they gave us was really, really nice. And it like the quality wasn't like truly terrible or anything like that. You could easily see what's on the board and what people are playing with. But I think it does kind of beg the question, when is TPI going to TPCI going to step up? and either heavily fund the streams in Latin America, at least for their regional championships. Yeah, I don't think like for, you know, the Bogota special event, I don't think we're going to get a super <laughs> high quality stream for something like the Bogota special event, but you got these big regional championships happening in Latin America that are only going to keep getting bigger. You know, when is TPCI either going to, you know, fund something uh, or just go over there? When are you going to be casting the regionals in Latin America? I feel like it has to be coming. I think that's the next step, right? They've already taken over Europe. Well, full, they're fully, you know, controlling that. You know, they've been doing North America for a little while. I feel like Latin America is kind of the next step. Um, and honestly, a step on top of that, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever see them do anything with uh, Australia, except maybe tell e or give ESL the funds to kind of put their own show on. Because they ESL did stream like the top eight of one of the Australian majors last year. But um, yeah, I feel like it's kind of like the next step in like growth of the game overall, like is to the Latin American events to start getting streamed. I don't know. It was like something that came up when we were kind of talking about the stream in general on my on my stream over the weekend no definitely and i totally agree i think it would be a great i mean because there's such a big community in latin america uh yeah. in brazil like you know especially uh people who like you know love the game and want to see it continue to grow and see more of it and yeah i think uh increased stream uh quality or support from tpci would definitely go a long way and hope in there but it feels like it's one of the steps um, the only other thing that I was going to mention for, for me this weekend, you know, content as usual, but yeah, I, I decided to quit coaching. Um, I saw your tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Open coaching. I am still going to be, you know, of course, fulfilling, fulfilling any coaching sessions purchased through Medify, um, but I'm no longer going to be offering open coaching through Medify. And I don't think that's going to change. I'm definitely doing it with the idea that I definitely need to take a break from it. But I think I'm just kind of done with open coaching probably forever. And nothing to do with Medify, of course. And, of course, if I want to do open coaching off Medify, I could. Uh, I still plan to coach people I have worked with long-term for a while uh, or who I've worked with for a while, continue to uh, work with them. Um, and then I do think, and I kind of mentioned this on the podcast, I think at some point, like my goal for my coaching was always eventually to not do as much coaching as I do and then only try and find and work with people like for the whole season or whatever that might be like. Pick, you know, get a couple students, plan to work with them the whole season, 
and make that what my uh, coaching is put towards my coaching time is put towards because yeah i was just yeah. really getting burnt out on everything so yeah it's like a shift up in uh my daily grind now not for a little bit for a couple of, i'm still kind of booked out for the next like two months or so so <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> that's pretty crazy months, yeah the next two months or so i'm still kind of booked out but like after that things are going to scale back a little bit more but put, and it's really just because i want to put more time into content it's not that i don't like coaching yeah it's like i just like doing the content more so i want to be able to start devoting more time to my to my content stuff so putting the coaching on a back uh on the back seat a little bit back burner but uh how was your week Chip? what'd you get done yeah, pretty good week. Um, nothing super crazy or anything like that. I did see Dune 2 this weekend with my dad, yeah. which was fun. And uh, yeah, have you seen it yet? Did you go see it? I yeah. know you. I actually, I got to see an early screening. I saw it like the Sunday before, because movies usually come out Thursday night now, like Thursday yeah. at midnight going into Friday. I saw it like the Sunday before that Thursday. Ooh, there was like a theater here or something like that. <laughs> no, there was just a theater near me that just had an early screening. It was like a fans first kind of thing or something. It's not like exclusive to uh, where I am, but like, like, you know, IMAX theaters across the country. Some of them had early screenings and I was able to get a ticket for that. Cause yeah, I was like looking it up to try and like find a, to get a ticket for Thursday, like everyone else. And it was just like, and apparently it's playing at on Sunday at 7 PM. So I was like, okay, sure. I'll go. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. Was, that was pretty cool. Uh, it yeah. was good. A very good movie. Definitely very top 10, movie. I think for sure for me. But yeah, I, I don't think I've ha had time to, uh sit on it enough to like properly rank it in f as far as if i think it's like you know one of the best movies i've ever seen yet but it was definitely awesome it was really good one of the best movies definitely like one of the best movies i've seen like since the pandemic happened for sure i used to go to the movies all the time but now i mean especially with like uh the baby and stuff like that i just don't have time or you know it just doesn't make sense to like we just haven't really gone to movies as much as we used to uh so it was definitely fun to get out there and go see it. Like, I think the last movie, like I saw Godzilla minus one last mm -hmm. end of the year. And that movie was great. I saw uh, that as well, yeah. And then before that, I don't think I had seen a movie for like six to eight months or something like that in the theater. Like it had been a long time. Um, but yeah, it was good. Uh, and then also this past weekend, we released the newest evolution series episode. So for yep. those of you who have been waiting on that, it is now available it is now live on the uncommon energy channel youtube.com slash at uncommon underscore energy if you want to go check it out overall pretty positive reception seems like people are excited to see episode two no spoilers here in case anyone hasn't watched it yet but definitely go check it out um we did have a few little audio issues and it seems like people did kind of you know realize that in the comments and stuff like that uh, so we apologize for that. It was an issue with the like actual microphones that we use themselves. Um, but we'll get it figured out and sorted out for the the next episode that we record, uh, which will be a little while before episode three comes out, uh, probably end of April, middle end of April, sometime in there. So keep your eyes out. Uh, but yeah, we've had a lot of fun with the series and it seems like everyone has been enjoying watching it as well. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, fun to put together. I'm excited for more and hopefully like more consistent content over there as we kind of yeah our next our routine and what we're gonna try and make work for that. Our next evolution series episode will not be for until the end of April, but we will try to have another different video out there before then. So keep your eyes out. Uh, the next few weeks, hopefully, is gonna be the plan. Yeah, so we're gonna try and come up with more. There's gonna be more content over there than just the evolution series. Like we've already done like the ETB. Uh, video over there as well so plans for uh, a couple different things um hopefully getting uh as much content as consistently as out as possible over there yeah um all right but yeah let's jump into it uh first thing to talk about this week is uh robin schultz putting out another super cool thing for the community that uh we all i, I kind of feel this is something that i actually like literally last week i was like yo i was like you know what limitless is missing i think i just said it on my stream i was like there's no deck builder well, i was like i feel like that's the thing that's missing from limitless right now um and this week robin schultz of course came out with a deck are you builder. i'm credit um, right now no for... no no. i'm just saying like he's probably oh. been working on this this whole time robin, and like... robin lurking in your stream he's like hmm, that's a good idea as well <laughs> no it's just funny quick. that you know, i was like literally like, hmm, like i feel like the only thing that's missing off limitless is like a deck builder like i feel like that's everything here but it feels like there should be a deck builder here as well I think is what I said on my stream. Um, and I'm sure I think Robin's been probably working on this for a while because it's very much a lot of uh, a lot of tools on it. Um, 
and a lot of stuff like that very well or very clean looking and works pretty well there's like a couple bugs i think that i ran into when i was using it earlier today on my stream uh but nothing like jurassic um it's not, it doesn't become like unusable or something like that but yeah robin put together really cool deck builder uh on limitless it's not on the official site quite yet because he uh he was in my chat earlier i think he said he wants to wait until he flushes out you know any problems or potential bugs that there might be before he you know um, puts it on the official site or links it through the official site so currently you can go check it out at my.limitlessdcg.com and uh yeah i mean why don't we show it off show the people yeah can do i have not quite played with this yet so i'm checking it out myself for the first time here uh but yeah there's different toggles you can you know search based on standard expanded glc as well i'm looking at zork gx right now because Zul and i were just talking about zork a minute ago so it was on the real fast go ahead and share your screen with me so i can see what you're seeing i just realized you're not oh <laughs> <laughs> i i like I, bad. I just went yeah, over because yeah, yeah. like the first part where i'd be this would be relevant yeah there share we go my screen right now <laughs> uh but yeah it's cool that he's actually got a glc tag in here which is pretty nice uh yep. so like if i wanted to do like uh a metal deck or something like that we've got the different things you could add um, but yeah, pretty cool. Definitely something worth like toying around with a little bit. And you can like make a profile, save everything as well. Name your decks. Good way to document things. I think something that people could use it for specifically like right now. And that's one of the things that Robin showed off here in his initial tweet is like preparing your post rotation decks, right? Rotation coming up around the corner. There's no really good way right now to compile the deck lists that you want to start practicing whenever the new set comes out. Uh, so this can be a nice way to do that um i imagine is there an export feature so you can like yeah make your deck list it looks like there is that's like a big deal as well oh yeah i didn't even realize there was that as well yeah, there's just so much in this thing um yeah you can do it for IRL tournaments print your deck list you can export to ptcg live um you can create folders for your decks like and it's, it's like everything that's on here you would like it kind of just like hurts a little bit um when we see all this stuff on here that robin has put into place on this this deck builder because so many of these things would be so nice on pdcg live <laughs> like so many of them would be so nice if they existed on pdc or even live. just pokemon.com oh. honestly yeah right? honestly yeah well, imagine if there was like a little bit of a uh, yeah a little deck builder tool um mm. on pokemon.com but uh at the very least in pdcg live like the like this deck builder existing kind of like with all these features these are all things that we wish we had on on pdcg live uh, it's so cool to have them of course here on the on the on the site that robin made or the tool that robin made and yeah i mean i think it's gonna go, be the go-to way to to build deck lists like when you're not building them irl or on ptcg live like if you just want to throw something together and then you can take it directly from here and then there's a little play test button up there in the middle um and it'll take you into the limitless simulator where you can yeah. go then play with the deck as if you were playing a game um uh, of course, it's not like playing a real game of Pokemon like on PDCG Live Ladder, but if you just want to run through some opening hands, you can do that, which is actually really, really cool. So, um, oh, actually, the, we'll go back one more time to the just throw some basic Pokemon in the deck real fast. So, whatever. Oh, no, oh, you, you have to like get a whole deck too. list. Well, go over the tools, the tools part. Okay. And then statistics. And there's Mulligan statistics here. We don't have a full 60 card. Ah. So the percentages aren't relevant <laughs> for what we have. Um, Let me just yeah, go, import a deck real quick. Yeah, go ahead, import a deck. Um, but that's like super, super cool as well. Just like all these little things, like some of the things I wouldn't even thought about, like this, uh, like the Mulligan feature. I wouldn't even thought about that to be honest. But there it is. And you can import directly from Limitless as well. So mm -hmm. let's look at tools, statistics, and you can see the chance of starting with each of your Pokemon as well, which is pretty cool. I wonder if Robin will also add like a thing on the limitless page to do like a open in deck builder or something. Like if you go to a regional tournament and then you like look mm. at someone's list, like yeah. an open in deck builder would be kind of nice. So then you could like take that 60 and immediately make edits to it. Yeah. Um, as few clicks as possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Um, Like those quality of life things are always nice. And Robin does really a good job at like adding those kind of things to all the stuff he does. Honestly, it's like so crazy that, the best website for the Pokemon TCG like this, is like anytime someone is interested in getting more into like the competitive Pokemon TCG or anything that I talk to, like I number one website to recommend is limitless for the tournament results to actually play in online tournaments. All like for so many different reasons, right? The card yeah. database, all these things. Uh, 
it's so crazy that it's like a a you know third party site is like the best website to like get into the game Mm -hmm. yeah i i I did think about that a little bit and one of the things i i feel like that is that kind of exists my like the other thing that i kind of um tie to that a little bit is esports like the, the sites that i use for like certain esports is the liquipedia pages i don't know if you've ever seen any of those chip yeah esports yeah, yeah. so There's like one for pokemon yeah there is one for pokemon which i don't know I if think it's would, kept up that much i was actually just on it right now i think would just get it would get used a lot more i think if limitless didn't exist it would probably be kept up to date a little bit more consistently if limitless didn't exist um oh but it's, it's kept up to date. they have all the information from the goyania regional championships um but i think very few people know about this um for sure i don't know if it's maybe more used in the uh the pokemon or yeah pokemon go or maybe the vgc side of things i think vgc maybe uses this quite a bit because they don't have like a limitless as far as i know so i think the pokemon liquipedia page is their maybe go to like hub for tournament information and results and stuff like that um obviously not as extensive as what's on limitless there's so much more on limitless than just like tournament results um and another tool being added of course is like the deck builder Oh, I was trying to find it, but Pokemon's Liquipedia is in the alpha wiki section, not in the main mm. wikis. So that's, I couldn't find it at first. Oh, what does that even mean? Is that like like alpha, beta, like that? Like Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The like they just, phase? they don't, it's not as like robust as the rest of them. Mm, okay. Yeah. Highlighted Pokemon players. Dang, bro. Look at this. Highlighted Pokemon players. Tord Reklev, Jason Glazinski, <laughs> Stefan Ivanov, Henry Brand, Ross Coffin. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Where is Azul? Who G-G? even uses? Who even uses <laughs> Pokemon Liquipedia? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Of course. Um, Dang, but with that as well, like, this is look, like, isn't the whole thing about these like Pedia sites that you can go and edit them? Azul is literally going to go in afterwards and try to like <laughs> is going to add himself. <laughs> Me in there. I'll just like delete someone's name and put my put my name in there. Um, Azul Garcia Griego. Dang, look at the blonde hair Azul picture they have. So have me on, uh, what team do they have me on right there? Card Cavern, C- I think. Do you even remember, know. That's dude. the picture. No, no, go click back. There's a team thing right there. I know no, what's my te- picture. No, oh, right oh, there. I see what you're saying. They say they team, don't have you on the right Cavern, team. TCG. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how much this gets used, to be honest, or how much people actually, um, I don't, I even definitely don't think, it. I don't think like many competitive TCG players actually know about this. For anyone who doesn't know what Liquipedia is, it's oh. a, Pedia for esports basically like there's one for, there's a page for valorant there's a page for csgo there's a page for call of duty there's a page for league of legends like all of all the esports have a liquipedia page and liquipedia is team liquid um which is a esports organization and this is their one of their sites they got they have, your boy uh, in here buddy come on now oh it shows what oh yeah shows see, me see, commentating see, these yeah and see like they do keep it i see it is updated right knoxville okay. didn't happen that long ago it's as broadcast there. talent as player they've got me <laughs> this in here the chill, chill series, series number, number 23. 23 i got second place i don't even remember Let's that oh who'd you lose to brandon salazar, salazar. Dude, i don't even remember this who are you playing i want to i don't remember <laughs> can i Man. find it but there would look uh is there a link to the is there a link to the limitless tournament there should be right i would hope so but it doesn't look like it chill series number 23 your boy got second place <laughs> that is so funny that that's listed in here and there's yeah. a league cup why is this league cup listed in here as well that i got dude, top what? eight at? I, and then I one just, that i won dude, oh one you of know your locals why, dude? must be uh i know why uh uh because um one of your locals I think, edits I th- the site <laughs> i think rahul has done stuff with liquipedia before uh, he was, okay he was at both of these league cups if i'm remembering Put them in there. Put them in yeah. there. I bet that um, his, if we click on this, we'll see. Yeah, so the Liquipedia pages are like huge in esports. Um, for Pokemon, like for the VGC, I feel like this is maybe you, this site is maybe used quite a bit for VGC. Uh, but then it also makes you think this would probably be used a lot more if Limitless didn't exist. And like I, I, there's something I tweeted out earlier, like quote tweeting Robin's post about the. Um, quoting robin's post about the the new deck builder is just i mean what would the pokemon tcg look like if robin didn't do all the things he's done in the game yeah it's true you know uh i mean and it would look like 
the stone ages really like what it, i guess what it used to look like in like 2015 2016 right there's no information sharing people yep. don't really find deck lists the only time anyone ever sees a deck list pretty much as if the owner of it was willing to share it on facebook mm -hmm. pretty much the, the community used Twitter. to entirely interact on facebook that's the, at least Binge. what was big whenever i was into it yeah. uh when i started getting into the game uh even before then it was like online forums like on pokey gym and stuff like that right um it definitely it definitely seems like uh, yeah the biggest thing would be like just tournament results the inf the information share of tournament results would be like the big thing yeah um i think that would be missing from the space um and i do think like that's where something like maybe like the liquipedia page would have stepped up and been a, a little bit more relevant of a source in the tcg side of things um but all the other tools that like robin has put out the online tournaments like that would suck to not have that platform to be honest that would be like a big one to be missing especially during covid um but then also just kind of uh right now as well like it's one of the best ways to practice uh pokemon is to play in these online tournaments right oh yeah it's even better than playing like locally um at like challenges or league cups because you're they're more efficient you play more pokemon you play can play um you know there's there's they're happening all the time and then the 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 quality of opponents is probably higher on these online tournaments than you'd actually get at local tournaments for the most part for pretty much everyone i would say um unless you're maybe like showing yeah. up to like a, a league it's cup the best like practice the, you can get for sure yeah yeah so like if you're looking to get good practice you should be going and playing in these online tournaments it's play.limitlesstcg.com that's where all also, the online tournaments happen by the way, I found the results from Chill Series 23, the format <laughs> finale. I lost an Eternatus Mirror. Oh. There we go. Unlucky. Eternatus Mirror match. What a legendary mirror match. Honestly, one of the best. Oh, my gosh. That is so disgusting. Dude, look how clean that list looks. A good old two-liner. When's the last dude. time you saw a two-liner on Limitless? It's been a while, dude. Yeah, everyone it used to be like a meme. Hammer turn, about... buddy. Come on now. With power plants, you know, shut them down. Dude, yeah, why is there power plant? Worse. I don't even remember this format. Why is there power plant in this deck? Well, I mean, you just draw with Crobat, then you stop their Crobat, right? Yeah, but I turn off my Eternatus ability, right? And then I can't oh. pinch a bunch of things. Is that wait? Did right? it only shut off? Did it shut off? No, power plant uh, shut off everything oh GX yeah it was yeah. gx's and gx's okay you okay, shut off okay. the dene i guess yeah, right? yeah 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 interesting there was probably just no better stadium to play what I was guess. the let's look at the sally's list here oh we lost to the weavile oh it was the weavile plus yeah so they got the big move ugly, attack list. Eventually. ugly list more than yeah. one line more than two lines <laughs> more than two lines i didn't even win bro. we what both had this? dude look at this format man we both so had i had four crushing hammer he had three <laughs> crushing hammer in his list there was decidui there was centus scorch adpz pikaram mad terrible party. format hey the party though <laughs> Yeah, that was a good deck. That was a fun deck. Andrew right Hedrick played in this tournament, played the Blacef Oh, wait, who did I beat in this tournament? That's what's important here. Playing Crescephalon. Chris Crescephalon. One of, one of the ugliest deck names ever. That's why we don't call it. Oh, wait, there's Juan right there with the Blacephalon. Juan literally just got top eight at this tournament, at the tournament on the over the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Couldn't get past me though. Yep. Phase two Swiss. Took him out. Let's see, did Azul <laughs> play in this tournament? I maybe did. Play in there? Uh, I don't even know what I, what nope, I played. Nope. Not in there. Yeah, I like to call it Tempo Blounds. People call it Crescephalon. Crescephalon is such an ugly I thought you called it Tempo Zard. Tempo Zard, probably. Yeah, yeah. Because like you double, you d did double blaze turn one so often. Crescephalon is a way cooler name. I don't know about you, but. Would you just call it? Crescephalon. Oh, I thought you said called it Cramcephalon. I was like, Cramcephalon. There's a Cramor There's a Cramorant in there, right? The yeah, Cramorant like... B, right? Snipe to the Denes. Well, memory lane here, but <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it would be. It would, it would honestly like. I think. I think. You know, we're talking about like Robin's deck builder. Uh, I'll give I'll give a shout out here to Jake Gearhart, who had built a deck builder for a little while, um, yeah, or Gear. who has a deck builder as, uh, as well. Pokegear app. That uh, that's what I used personally to make my uh, make my decks on for a while. So I, there is other tools out there, of course, that people. Um, have made besides just what uh, uh, Robin is doing. Pokestats Live, there's, I mean, of course, there's always that Pokestats, Pokestats Live controversy, but I think the idea of 
a tool out there that makes it easy for people to follow turn major tournaments that they're not at. Like I think Pokestats Live should exist. The question is that to like what what extent of information should be given out through it, I think is the bigger question. Um, but overall I like I like Pokestats Live as a as a tool for the community to utilize to follow along uh, in tournaments. And I think if Robin didn't do some of the things he did, other people would have stepped up. But like when Limitless exists, you know, a lot of people probably things that they would have done or could have done, you know, they're not going to do because it already exists in the community, right? Yeah. And Robin does and it, it is, so well, you can't really outdo what Robin's doing, right? It, like, and it is kind of nice hard. that it's like a, a all encompassing place, right? Like yeah. you can do so much here uh, on Limitless. So yeah, yeah big it's like a out. hub for literally everything, like in for tournament information, tournaments, online tournaments, and now the deck builder. Like there's just so many so many things all under one umbrella which is really really good to see so yeah i mean it's sick another thing added to the the list of things robin has done for the community um and uh yeah i hope he doesn't ever leave <laughs> I hope yeah he never, for real i hope he never loses i know he's been playing like uh i see him on twitter sometimes i think he's been playing a lot of one piece recently and, and he does like online like he does do like in he, the deck builder, you can build one piece decks in the deck builder as well there's so think, limitless for one piece did you know that oh i didn't even know there was all this no yeah, he's been doing literally limitless stuff for One Piece. Okay, okay. Yeah, I we gotta be careful, bro. We're gonna extent. lose him. Yeah, <laughs> please. Yeah, we're hoping. I hope Robin maintains some interest in the Pokemon TCG, because um, yeah, that would that would be uh, a big L to the community for sure. If uh, if Robin did decide to no longer pursue anything in the Pokemon, so hopefully he re maintains his interest for sure. Yeah. Yeah, big shout outs to Robin. And of course, big shout outs to Limitless TCG. Go check them out. Go support them on Patreon as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Robin can keep doing what he's doing. With that being said, let's move on to our next topic here. There were just a handful of new cards that came out this past week. Um, we figured we'd take a moment at least to talk about them. Um, so yeah, let's just hop into it. Uh, nothing. Good. I don't think there was anything super crazy in these. I don't really remember what the the other two did but yeah we'll start with this one ariados from scarlet violet 5a has the ability big net if your opponent's active pokemon is an evolution pokemon its retreat cost is one colorless more and then its attack 10 plus 30 more damage for each energy in your opponent's active pokemon's retreat cost yeah i don't i don't think too much of this card it's got the 90 hp but we lose level ball to rotation it feels like i I really like conditional Pokemon search cards that are powerful that have limitations, like Level Ball, like Mysterious Treasure, like Cherish Ball. Um, I think some of them have been too powerful in the past. Sometimes Mysterious Treasure is like one of the best Pokemon cards like ever printed. The cards yeah. are ridiculous. Of course, it's limited to just Psychic and Dragon Pokemon, of course, right? So, um, I think we'll we'll get some more of that back as we progress. I mean, we already have like Buddy Buddy Poffin, um, and maybe it's a little bit of like. Uh, because we had Battle VIP pass, Buddy Buddy Poffin doesn't feel as impactful as a card as it probably should, or doesn't feel like one of those cards as much as it should, but it probably should feel a little bit more like that just because we're going from Battle VIP pass, which is like arguably a better card, to the Buddy Buddy Poffin, which is a little bit more limited. So it feels like it's like getting toned down. It's not like all of a sudden they're releasing a level ball or a mysterious treasure. It's like we're getting something worse than what we just had. So it doesn't feel as good, I guess, or as a. Uh, as much like one of those cards, but I'm sure we'll get more of those cards as we, you know, get new sets and stuff like that. Yeah. This card reminds me obviously of like Spide Ops EX from Scarlet Violet base set, but yeah, this basically is just re increases your opponent's act Pokemon's retreat cost entirely, like whether or not it's an evolution Basic. Pokemon. Um yeah, I don't know if the, the little spider is gonna be any better. It's not a two prizer. There's that. Yeah. It only works with evolutions as well. The so. Spide Ops plus Aridos deck. Just give them all the retreat. <laughs> I guess maybe. I mean, Play basics the, have generally wasteland. basics generally have less HP, right? Like EXs, like stage two EXs have more HP. We need to keep. We need to get more. We need to build up mm -hmm. more retreat costs on them. And it's extra one energy. All right, don't sleep on the area to spite ops deck. Hold on now. <laughs> Next card yeah. here, a new A spec. So we were wondering how many more A specs we were gonna get. Um, two so far now that we don't yeah. have yet. Yep, we've got the Survival Cast. If the Pokemon this card is attached to has full HP and would be KO'd by damage from an attack, it is not KO'd, and its remaining HP becomes 10 instead, then discard this card. Yeah, I mean, so this is like a kind of like a reprint um, of Focus Sash. Focus Sash basically did this, except Focus Sash could only be attached to fighting Pokemon. 
Uh, where's the survival? Could focus as discard though? Yes. After it, okay. Um, but yeah, survival cast only works, um, or survival cast can be put on anything. Um, is what I should say. Um, and that'll be interesting. I mean, control decks might like this over the cape a spec. Um, there's like a lot of things that this could just be really, really good with, or even like broken with. But we do have a balancing factor of lost vacuum. So currently in the format, we have lost vacuum. So like if this thing ever gets like out of control in some kind of combination. Uh, in a deck where you could like play this with like Silene or Roseanne's backup to recover it and then just kind of loop it. Yeah. And then constantly make it so you're never getting KO'd. You can always just check in Lost Vacuum. So, but the thing would be when Lost Vacuum rotates, this does not rotate. So we potentially have a format coming up where this could be looped in a deck where we don't have a way to actually respond to it. Um, so that would be that would be potentially toxic but i think as long as as long as we have lost vacuum or something like lost vacuum alongside this card uh, it's a good card but definitely not like broken or anything like that but it's a, i think it's a powerful a spec which is really cool to see because i think we we're like how do you ever beat prime catcher they came out with unfair stamp they've come out with this i think we're on good track um for uh to have a pretty healthy a spec meta or like you know what is being played as far as the a spec goes they should have just made it focus band though a limitless so doesn't even go this far back. <laughs> well, is this thing? Oh, well, that's what I actually I actually asked my Wait, chat, and I didn't I know this. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Focus band from Neo Genesis. If the Pokemon Focus band is attached to, would be knocked out by your opponent's attack. Flip a coin. If heads, that Pokemon is not knocked out, and then its remaining HP becomes ten instead. So it's the same. It's a coin flip but it doesn't have to be put on something that has full HP. It can be 10 HP away from being KO'd, then you yeah. slap a focus band on it. They could have also just made it focus band and changed the wording, but then they would have to like run to the issue of, can we just use the old focus band? Then they'd have to come out with like a mm. statement on, no, you can't, or yes, you can. But is it possible the official translation is focus band? Is no. Right? What is it currently called? Survival cast? Oh, it doesn't look like a band anyways. So, yeah, yeah, no. This is something that's unique. Yeah, this is definitely something else. I take it back um i think that's fine um come with yeah we don't have to talk about what this thing looks like yeah <laughs> all right next, next card. card good card also another good card lana's assistance put up to three and yeah. in combination of pokemon that doesn't have a rule box uh and basic energy cards from your just compile into your hand so kind of like a clara reprint but it is worse than clara for sure clara takes Two up to two energy cards and up to two Pokemon from a discard pile and puts them into your hand. This one is three in any combination of Pokemon or energy. Uh, both are basic energy, but you can't get any Pokemon with a rule box. So, yeah, I don't know that it's worse. It's it, worse. Well, no, because it's, it's worse. <laughs> it's just different. It's just different. No, it's there, worse. There's definitely going to be, there would be some deck at some point where it's just like you just want to get three Pokemon back or you just want to get three energy back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. No, I think uh, it'll be played. I think this card will be played, but yeah, it's worse than like, Clara. There, but there it could be a world where both cards are in format. Uh, I guess Claire is about to rotate, right? But yeah. There, there could have been a world where they're both in format, and this card would have been better in a deck. Yeah? Yes, but it's still a worse card overall, you know? Like, you could play it instead of something. I'm not going to call... Uh, I'm not going to call Great Ball better than Ultra Ball, but I could play a deck with Great Ball without Ultra Ball. Like, Sure. Yeah. But <laughs> so I, yeah, for specifically in a deck, okay. yes. But but it doesn't mean it's like that's a bad thing either. Well, it's worse than Super Rod then by that metric. This no, because it goes to your hand is different than Super Rod. Like Clara is different than Super Rod. Mm, okay. Uh, but no, it's Claire worse. Is different it's worse. than this, right? Super Rod is a better card. Super Rod's a better card. You are right. You are right. <laughs> no, okay. it is. Um I think we'll see play for sure. Definitely. Um, yeah, especially yeah. the Clara rotating, like we just were saying. Um, you know, there's still the what it's just funny that you caught me with the and i was like wait a second hold on no super is definitely a better card this is what we're here for bro just we're for talking me, about for me to keep you honest <laughs> if we're talking about pokemon recovery cards super yeah, super is a better card yes yep yep, yep. just like Clara's if you better were than if you assistance. were drafting in the pokemon tcg and you opened up a pack that had this and super in it you're definitely taking the super odd before you take this card yeah yep yep exactly yep. yeah yeah um but yeah, yeah, it's basically it's, Clara with like a a balance adjustment, right? Only three. It's three in any combination of Pokemon or energy instead of up to two and two. Um, and then no rule boxes, right? So they don't want you to be able to get rule box Pokemon back with your... Uh, yeah, no training Radiant Clara. Charizards anymore. Yeah. I actually really like 
it's really interesting to see cards like this immediately come out as Clara's rotating. So it's like, so they definitely just want Clara in format, just different, right? Basically, well, it's, it's like, kind of like Buddy Poffin in Battle VIP Pass, right? Yeah, it's like, it's like they the exact want, same thing. Yeah, kind of. It's like we want we want you to be able to find basic Pokemon aggressively as long as they have seventy or less HP. Yeah, and they have to go to your bench, right? Like, which is uh, yeah, it's we don't want you to be to Battle see. VIP passing for Squawk ability and then like popping off and drawing a million cards, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's really cool to see, and I, I think it's like a. No, it just feels like they it's like the healthier game design is happening basically when i see these kind of like immediate adjustments it's like eh, clara was a little bit too good let's adjust it what do we want it to look like going moving forward i um, then immediately as clara rotates this card well i guess we have one set break right between Clara rotating and this coming out there's a one set different one set break but yeah, yeah basically yeah. immediately so, i don't think anyone's gonna miss this effect too much though yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it might be, yeah, it might be played It'll immediately be nice on when release. It comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much to like work on and play. Like, I actually just played my first game of the new format during a coaching session um, this week. Dude, I'm just like so excited. And it was just like literally, like, it was like the, the, the games we were going through was like uh, Charizard versus Arctina or something. So it was like, yeah, two older decks, but it was still so enjoyable. Like, it's such a, this, these long it's formats, new, it's just different. Yeah, you don't realize how bad the long formats are until you like finally get the new set and start playing with the new cars. And it's like, oh my gosh, dude, what we're playing with right now is just so boring and been done a thousand times. Like, I'm super excited for the new, new playing with the new, actually physically playing with the new cards. Well, not physically playing with them on PTCG Live, the end of next week, a little bit over a week away, but we're almost there. And then I guess from there, you know, that's the last of the new cards, just a few new cards. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and move on to guess that flavor text. But before we do that, we do have to take a moment to thank our fantastic sponsor, Dragon Shield, for supporting us here at the Uncommon Energy Podcast. Of course, Dragon Shield makes some of the best card gaming and tabletop gaming products. They make the best sleeves, binders, deck boxes, and so much more. Azul Vancouver is coming up. You're going to try out one of the two new colors at vancouver the soul or the power dual mat sleeves or you got something else lined up um i don't have any plans so actually i might rock the the soul i'm a big fan of the color purple in general so i might have to break the souls out and give them a shot and if any of you want to pick up any of the new soul or power colors dragonshield.com uh, link of course will be in the description you can use code uepod to get yourself five percent off and uh, directly support us here on the podcast and with all the other content we are are doing so yeah go check them out dragonshield.com yep we use the dragon shield sleeves every time we play the pokemon tcg we use them in the evolution series we use them anytime we play in any pokemon tournament so yeah definitely our preferred and go-to sleeves we recommend them as well to anyone else wanting to play the pokemon tcg go check them out check out some of the new colors and some of our old favorites as well um as well likes the blood reds i've been a fan of the classic black mats as well so those are some of our favorite recommendations um and then yeah i think we can move on it's a good old guess that flavor text episode 100 100 weeks of guess that flavor text as well yeah we're 100 uh 100 in here i know we said and i think someone even in like the comment section has mentioned a couple times that we or we mentioned we might do something special for our 100th episode um and some and we've seen i think a couple comments about it as well uh and we're not doing anything special for our 100th episode pretty much at all but <laughs> i don't think that's a bad thing uh for sure who knows maybe on episode 200 we'll do something something special that's a long ways away but um, yeah 100 weeks of guest have we really done it we've done it every, every episode right yeah we did change it up like in episode 10 i think because yeah we were 10 lifelines. weeks in and nobody had gotten a point so we added the lifelines which has made it a lot more fun i think yeah yeah definitely for sure but yeah your week give me a flavor text so i can try and guess which pokemon it belongs to chip yeah yep. so with it each week on this game azul or i picks a card reads the flavor text from it and then the other host has to guess which pokemon is featured on that card we keep track, we keep score, and if you get it correct, you earn yourself four points, and then each lifeline you use, you lose a point. And the lifelines you can use are what set the card is from, what stage of the card is, and read an attack name. And it is my turn to pick for Azul. The score currently sits at 21 to 12, so I've got a pretty sizable lead here. We'll see if Azul can make up some ground this week. What do you think, buddy? You ready? I'm going to do my best, Chip. Hit me with it. <clears throat> All right. 
the reason it guides people all the way down the mountain, all the way down to the mountain's base is that it wants them to hurry up and leave. Huh. Oh my gosh. Um, all right, hit, hit it with me one more time. Hit me with it one more time. Yeah. The reason it guides people all the way down to the mountain's base is that it wants them to hurry up and leave. Oh, it's a Pokemon that wants people to get off its mountain. So I'm thinking some kind of like ice Pokemon probably is in the mountains. Generally snow for some reason, like Snover is coming to my mind. And I think it probably is a basic. It sounds like a something like a basic Pokemon flavor text for sure. Um, Snover's coming to mind. Delibird's coming to mind with this one. Let's, I mean, let's do, let's use at least one lifeline here to start off with. I, I want to guess Snover, but let's go with what set the card is from. To start off it with. is from Cosmic Eclipse, Sun and Moon Cosmic Eclipse. Sun and Moon Cosmic, was that the uh, ADP set? It was, that right? That is the ADP set. I don't know if there's a Snover in that set. <laughs> let's go, let's go with an attack name. Its attack name is Rubbish Blizzard. Oh, I know this card. I know this card. I know this one. Rubbish <laughs> Blizzard. Is that Snover? That might be Snover. Should I just lock in Snover? I don't know. Now I'm kind of... That sounds so familiar. But now I'm, the more I think about it, I don't know if I know. But if no, if I know if it's a basic or an evolution... Well, if I know it's an evolution, I won't guess Snover. But I feel I feel so strongly about it being a basic. The only, only one I could think about would be... Rubbish Blizzard. Rubbish. Oh. Is there like an ice of like the Burmies? Of the Is what? The Burmy Pokemon? The Wormadam? I the don't ones. think so. Yeah, I don't think there's an ice one. Maybe I just lock in Fighting Snover. Fighting grass and steel. Yeah, this is a tough one now. Um, what else could it be? If I'm thinking it's a basic book, I'm just gonna lock in Snover here. We're gonna lock in. Uh, lock yeah, lock in. in. Oh. Lock in Snover. Go go Snover. Snover. In. Locking in the Snover. Trying to get two points, and unfortunately, you get zero points. All right. Because it is not Snover. And to answer the last lifeline for anyone playing along at home, it is not a basic. It is a mm. stage one Pokemon. Is it Glalie? It is not Glalie. That would have been a better guess, though, than Snover. What do you think of, like, what could translate to rubbish when you think about the Pokemon TCG? What Thanks. type of card could be considered rubbish? Of car like, Garbiter? Well, not exactly what I mean. Yeah, I don't quite get it then. Let me, can I read you the effect of Rubbish Blizzard? Yeah, sure. All right. The effect of Rubbish Blizzard says this attack does 10 damage for each Pokemon tool card in your discard pile. Oh, what card is that? I know what the card is. It's it's not Garbodor, though. It's I don't remember. the I don't remember the Pokemon. It is. See, this is why I know. It, oh. Nine Tails. Yeah, that's I would have never gone to a Lola Nine Tails. I don't think I would have I, never. I thought a... your best shot would have been remembering. I've this, seen this like, card. Attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. This, I know this card was not super good, but it like you know, you probably played some meme deck or something like that with it back in the day streaming. Yep. You know, I don't, I, I don't know if I did, but yeah, so this would be a card where I would have done that. I think right. I looked. I think people wanted me to play a deck with this, and I just never did. I was like, yeah, yeah nah, yeah. Hmm. I actually think this is like one of Mahone's most watched YouTube videos is with this card. I think it is. I yeah. think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what is standing out to me about this card is one thing is to do. Because a lot of people wanted me to play with it and I never did. But then I think it's like one of Mahone's most watched YouTube videos. It's up um, there. Oh, it used to be number one, I think, but he's had some other bangers in recent years. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Zero energy deck. Busted Alola Nine Tails deck. <laughs> that feels like such a basic title, but it worked out. It worked the out, yeah. Tales. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's why it sounded so familiar, too. Like, I like, yeah, I did. There was definitely something there for me where I was like, this sounds familiar, but I, I can't quite put my finger on it. I would have never got to the Nine Tails, I don't think. Big shout out to Tim and Games, who keeps up with the Guess That Flavor Text scoreboard for us. Um, Alola Nine Tails is his favorite Pokemon, and they rec they requested this card. 
didn't know oh, if we had anything planned. So you got some help on that good. one. Okay. I don't know about help. Don't act like you've never <laughs> used a card that someone gave you as a recommendation for guess that flavor. No, best. I definitely have. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah. Have. <laughs> so there we go. The Alolan Nine Tails. Better luck in two weeks as well, where next week I'm going to, you know, get up to, you know, a 10 point lead at least for sure. Jeez, chill out. That's the goal. That's the goal. Me All like right. A little bit. No. All right. Moving on. <laughs> we can talk about the results from the Goiania regional championships that took place this past weekend. Uh, and there's definitely some interesting things that went down. Main thing, number one being the fact that Snorlax won another regional championships. And it was Marco Safuentes Meta, great player from Latin America, from Chile, who, uh, yeah, was able to take it down with this Radiant Charizard Chi Yu build of the deck, which is something we've seen pop up a little bit before. Yeah. Uh, and it actually, you know, when you're looking at post rotation control decks, a lot of the post rotation control lists are playing something kind of similar to this i guess at least the chi Yu. um yeah this is i mean this is i would definitely I call it is kind of different yeah i would definitely call this like control as opposed to like block lax or like yeah block yeah. lax like there is the one snorlax in here but you're just trying to take advantage of like all the different little disruptive things you can one of them being the snorlax um yeah we've seen builds like this for a little while now like the pidgeot uh, we've seen for a little i feel like kremasoli might have been the first person to really like popularize so, the yeah. pidgeot snorlax and then i think hale was the first person to add the radzard um that i saw anyways at like portland uh the portland regional championships and since then you know the deck's been popping up and doing okay here and there uh and the ready the ready the radzard adds like a lot of depth to your options um and your kind of game plans and what you can do game to game and we saw that um very much so be apparent in the top four match of Marco against Ricardo. A little bit less so in the finals because Mimikyu is like was such a big threat in the finals specifically. But yeah, we saw that be very apparent in the, the top four match for sure. So yeah, I mean, the deck is cool. It's cool to see this kind of alternate win condition deck winning instead of like a block lax deck because that deck is super boring and not yeah. fun and not exciting. Um, but like this, this deck, like the way you have to win games with this deck sometimes is like really cool and really interesting. And just overall, definitely cool to see control. I would say, uh, I don't know if it's at the top of the metagame right now. I don't know if this is like a tier one deck, um, but being able to compete for sure. And Marco getting the dub here. Yeah, definitely cool to see uh, a control deck where you can take all six of your prize cards, right? Yep. Your goal isn't. All, I mean, your goal is just to win in whichever way makes the most sense for the matchup, right? Uh, revolutionary stuff there, I know. But um, it's kind of cool because, like, the Charizard, a lot of people would see that and be like, oh, so it's like an attacking control deck. And it's like, no, it's a control deck that can attack. You've got the double turbo energies yeah. for Pidgeot. You really just want to, like, whatever your opponent can do, you want to be able to have ways to mess with whatever their game plan is. And sometimes what that is is to take knockouts on specific Pokemon that maybe, you know, capitalizing on list knowledge, you know, they can't recover or something like that, or just clear a threat off their field because then, you know, they won't be able to one hit KO anything else for the rest of the game. Something like that. Um, like yeah, it's so probably not uncommon that you just like radiant Charizard to take two prizes, knock something out. That's a threat. And then, you know, control your way out through the rest of the game with Mawile or Snorlax or something like that. Yeah. Basically like if like the, something big that we saw in the top four matchup is like, now, this isn't like a pure block lax build, but you don't really want to put B barrel in play as the backscalibur player against this matchup because then they're just going to trap your B barrel in the active with Maul Wireless Norlax, right? The, mm -hmm. the whole game. So you have to play with just a kind of a backscalibur, Chi and Pow, maybe Greninja board. And that means you have no draw power in play. So the Iono could hit you really hard towards the end of the game. You combo that with a Radiant Charizard, or if you only set up one backscalibur, which is what we saw happen in game one, only one backscalibur setup, you just KO that on like turn three. And then the backstabber player can't attack on the next turn. Yeah. And then you could Radzard again on whatever they have left in play that's relevant and just kind of snowball your um, snowball your lead from there. Uh, and there's so much stuff that's played in this list, but there's actually so many things. There's like a couple cards that stand out to me specifically that aren't played in this list that I'm sure most people played around. One, there's no super odd. Uh, so like 
aggressively recovering your Pokemon. Like you have to use Clara if you want like that aggressive recovery or Silene, but then you're of course flipping coins. And the other thing is there's no echoing horn. There's and no I Team Yell's bet... cheer here either. Uh, yeah, no Team Yell's cheer is another one. And I bet the majority of people were playing as if this deck had an echoing horn in it. So I think like the big one that stands out to me that there's no echoing horn. And I was actually curious. So I went back and looked at other lists of this deck and it seems to be about 50 50 of echoing horn no echoing horn in the most recent builds um and now something you have to question especially with marco winning this one when you go up against one of these decks are you going to play around echoing horn or not because that's a huge piece of information yeah. to work around right because one of the win conditions with this deck is still to just trap something in the active there's the erica's invitation can be used multiple times many times with the pal pads um but can you just freely ultra ball away all your Pokemon if they don't have Echoing Horn, or if you think they don't have Echoing Horn, or should you play as if they don't have Echoing Horn and just fr freely ultra, way, ultra ball away your Pokemon? I mean, you can't know until you try it. <laughs> but, uh, so there's so many things that like this list doesn't have in it. There's so many other things that it could include. And like I don't think Marco, if Marco probably um, played this in the next tournament he goes to, or uh, even went back and played this tournament, probably would change some things, right? And would change things moving forward depending on what the adjustments uh, he thinks are needed. So, yeah, this this kind of deck, it's, like, really hard to kind of pin down and uh, know what you should or shouldn't be playing against. So it's, like, it's, even moving forward, even though we've had, like, an established winning list, you don't you still don't really know what to play against or what to do when you play against this deck, to be honest. Yeah, and it's definitely, like, we'll this is, I think, a... Uh, more enjoy i think you kind of already said this right but this is like kind of a more enjoyable control deck to exist in the format than something just like yeah. snorlax right straight snorlax you know you can kind of just turn your brain off and just stick something active and hope that's good enough right you gotta there's some really tough decisions you have to make with this version of the deck yeah definitely um and it is harder to play against than block lax as well of course because you have so many different options so um for the control player uh, it's almost easier to be playing something like this as long as you understand your deck well. Um, for the opponent, you know, no one's testing against this deck, right? And a lot of people, even sometimes when they queue up against decks like this online, they just concede instantly. Yep. If they, you queue up against one on PTCG Live, you just concede. So um, there's a massive advantage to be to play to be to playing a deck like this very very well, um, because the vast majority of opponents, if not every opponent you go up against, is going to make some pretty big game errors that really leaves up some some massive opportunities for you to take dubs. Um, that's something that like leaning into can be pretty good. We saw it actually just recently, right, with uh, Tord playing the pile at the last tournament. Like, there's like you just don't know what to do against it, right? So many people just don't know what to do in so many situations against that deck or a deck like this. That uh, that's just hard to play against. Um, but it wasn't the only. I guess we've seen the deck before. It's not like the the, the deck isn't a new yeah. thing. But there was definitely some other crazy decks in top eight. And second place was Palkia, which we haven't seen really have a, a great performance in a little while it's been a little bit but it's back <laughs> and it made it to the finals this time yeah yeah palkia with that ice rider calyrex v max in here is a one one line it's also got that one chi and pal uh kind of similar to the way people were playing palkia in the last format right um have we seen we've seen it a little bit this format am i didn't well there was one palkia in top deck? eight of a uh, european regionals this format yeah, luke, or was that the last format no no luke made a top eight this format and then also at san antonio um joey made top eight yeah um, okay so we've had two top eights from palkia i think those might have been back to back uh, and then since then it's been a little quiet um now i'm not gonna lie i'm not that big of a fan of this deck overall i think it does have some pretty major flaws i think it's tina matchup is really tough i think the guardian matchup can be pretty tough as well if you can't pull together that cancel cologne play um overall it's a pretty cool deck though um, you got a lot of options, um, similar to kind of something like, I don't know, the control deck or something. There's a lot for your opponent to play around with this deck, right? You got the Palkia, the Ice Rider, the Chin Pao, the, the Greninja. Um, you have disruption options in the Roxanne and the Iono. Aggressive plays with Cross Switcher. So there's a also, lot for your opponent to like take into account when playing against this. This deck almost won as well, right? Because yeah, it was a close match. In the, in the finals, Dalton goes Iono, Marco. And Devo. Yeah, Roxanne uh, TM Devo. Yeah, yeah, Rock. It went, went for the Rocks. Yeah, not Iona. There was the Roxanne plus TM Devo play to get rid of the Pidgeot and leave Marco with a Radiant Charizard in the active spot that had just attacked the last turn. So it was like a decent chance that Marco was just not going to be able to do anything. But off the Roxanne, Marco did find a rare candy to just rare yep. candy back into the Pidgeot, get it all set up again. If that doesn't happen, I mean, there's only two rare candy in this list, right? One of them had already been used to get the yeah. Pidgeot set up the first time. You know, who knows? Maybe we're talking about Palkia winning a regional championships. Yeah, it was close. And even in game one, like I was kind of talking about, like, 
I don't think Dalton probably has a ton of experience in this matchup. And I think made a pretty big mistake on turn two by going to KO the active instead of the lone Pidgey in play of Marcos. And the Pidgeot is everything in yep. the control deck. It is literally everything. Like if you don't set that up, you're scrambling to set it up as soon as possible. And if you never set it up, you probably just lose to a deck like Dalton's that actually has so many options and outs to everything that Marco could throw at you. Has Greninja plus the Kenzen Cologne to get around. The Mimikyu has a bunch of switch cards, two escape up, two switch, and the four cross switchers. Yep. Um, and then has some heavy hitters in the Palkia, in the Ice Rider. This is actually like one of the more probably interesting or less straightforward matchups that the control deck could go up against. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, like I said, Dalton made a huge error in game one. Who knows how that game could have gone? I don't think we went to a game three. I think it was 2 0 for Marco, but even I'm game pretty two sure it was, was game uh, three. It was definitely game three. Oh, yeah, because I think uh, Marco went Sonorx pass at one of the games. Yeah. We couldn't recover from that. Marco, like, we, started really slow on one of yeah, them. We yeah. Might have, yeah, we might have gone to a game three. So, yeah, really close set. Um, this is definitely one of the decks that, like, probably gives uh, the control deck a little bit harder time. Because, yeah, just like how, like how much options the control has, this deck has a lot of options as well. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, Paul Kitt, like, this is, like, even though I, I, I just want to, when, whenever I say, like, I'm not a big fan of the deck, I always like to give my opinion on things, of course, as well. Um but I'm never hating on a deck, right? Like the Palkia deck making necessarily a bad deck. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's that great. Like I would never recommend anyone play Palkia to a tournament. I'd never bring it myself. But it's really cool that it made it to the finals. Like I am still just like a fan of Pokemon, and just whatever ends up doing well is what does well on the day. It doesn't really matter. The players probably all played great. You know, they worked on their lists. They refined their skills with their decks. Um. So I think it's sick that Palkia made it to the finals, right? Um. But I will also throw out my opinion out there as well as how good I think a deck is right now, moving forward, you know, just kind of in general. But I do think it is sick that the Palkia deck did make it there um, for sure. And uh, a deck that is not as new, but the build is out there for sure. This is a little bit different of a build for the Backscalibur than something we've uh, seen at all recently, especially after like Owen kind of won, what was it, Dortmund? Um, and it feels like it was getting a little bit more standardized as to like the way people were playing Backscalibur, and there was definitely a rise in popularity of Backscalibur after Owen at one as well. Yeah, we see this build from Ricardo and William that uh, definitely shakes things up. And I actually like this build I, after actually going back and playing with Owen's build Alpha of Dortmund. I still disliked the cross switchers quite yeah. a bit, uh, so I really like this build that Ricardo and William brought here, and uh, definitely going to give it a, a try myself this week on the stream at some point. Yeah, double Iron Hands, double basic Lightning Energy. It's also got a mm -hmm. Luminion V in here. There's also a Boss's Order. is not something you see all the time in this Chiam Palace, yeah. especially ones that play Cross Switcher, of course. Um, but yeah, there's the one Escape Rope. There's no Cross Switchers, no Canceling Colognes, anything like that. Also a thicker 3-2 Bieberel line uh, are kind of the highlights here. Yeah, the big standout for me is the Luminion more so than anything, to be honest. Um, and then it does kind of make sense to run a boss's orders if you do have that Luminion included, I feel like. Like, that kind of sure. makes sense. Um, and it's not that they're trying to attack with Iron Hands any more than any other Chi and Pao deck is trying to. They're just going to be able to do it more consistently, right? Yeah. Um, one Iron Hands, one Lightning Energy. You're just a little less consistent at finding those cards. You're also a little more likely to just prize one of the two of them, yeah. and then that play is eliminated from you entirely. So... Two Iron Hands, two Lightning Energy definitely makes it so that if your hand is conducive to setting up a turn two Iron Hands attack, you can do it, right? You're not going to have to worry about something being prized, most likely. Yeah, definitely for sure. So, yeah, this is a really <clears throat> interesting build. Yeah, definitely more consistent at pulling off that turn two Iron Hands. And with the Luminion in there, I would say you're probably more just more a little bit more consistent maybe at pulling off that turn two Backscalibur. I think the biggest thing with Luminion has always been in this deck is like, okay, maybe you get your back scalibur out there more consistently but is sacrificing that bench space actually worth making it worth including the minion over that's something i'm still not too sure about there was some there was a cool play i think ricardo did do um, with how he managed his bench in one of the day two games of day two or maybe day one it might have been william actually how they managed their bench around the potential of putting the minion in play next turn and it kind of worked out beautifully where like the luminion ended up in play like they didn't put greninja in play on turn one even though they could have then Luminion comes into play, which leads to the turn two Iron Hands, and everything kind of came together really, really nicely. So we got to see like the full power of Luminion in that specific sequence there. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the iffiest thing here for me. Because, like, I mean, you can't really, like, if, if Iron Hands really is that important in the current format to be able to attack with in the current meta of the format, then, I mean, you can't really argue too much against two Lightning, two Iron Hands, right? It's like, if you want to be doing that turn two 70% of your games or something like that, like, it kind of makes sense to include the higher counts, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I think that is like Iron Hands is one of the main reasons to probably play this deck right now. Um, yeah, it's for sure, for sure. Uh, it's a little bit a less weaker. 
with Alex. A bit more versatile than something like the Maridon, right? Like you have you mm-hmm. you're like I don't think you're attacking with Iron Hands as consistently as Maridon, but um, you're still attacking with it pretty consistently. And yeah, then, and then like, you have other options: the Greninja, the Chi Power for the one hit KOs, like against have Charge so Art and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, and then uh, probably the biggest surprise deck <laughs> to see at this point in the tournament, uh, and that is a top four finish from the Cloth Electrode, the good old Cloth deck. Is what the heck? What are we doing here? Uh, yeah, I actually had a realization that I still have yet to play a game with Cloth Electrode. Not because I like hate the deck or anything like that. It's just I just haven't found the time to like want to put time into playing Cloth Electrode. I usually <laughs> play with most, if not all, Pokemon decks throughout a format. And this has been a long format. This mm-hmm. has been a really long format. I have yet to play a game with Cloth Electrode. That's crazy. Um, yeah, it made its way into the top eight. Once again, not a deck that I'm like, it's it, this isn't like a game changer for this deck though you know like sometimes we see and actually like in general like i don't think it's gonna have too big of an impact on the meta i actually kind of talked about this on my stream as well actually knows that during a coaching session recently like even palkia getting second like palkia already had its hype moment when uh luke and joey had their top eights like palkia getting second here i don't think it's going to change too much about how people feel about palkia right and cloth has so, had so much time in the format as well and it already has like a very a very much a very big um or a, a certain was it is it the word stigma? Well, no, what am I looking for? It's a different word. It's um or people like already like kind of tie things to something. What's the word I'm looking for? That it's already like well no no, no but like what is something? the word what is the word I'm looking for? It's uh maybe it is stigma. There's already a stigma, yeah, there's already a certain stigma around a cloth electrode that it's like not good enough of a deck, right? Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, I don't think it's like like you know, a tier one, tier two deck, probably tier three, tier four, but um, once again, just cool to see it doing well. Um and it's it is like that is one thing you can look at these and like sometimes like but sometimes that's like to the to the downfall of the potential like player base or people who look at this stuff if you already if you kind of over if you already have like too strong of a judgment because like not everyone's right all the time if you already have too strong of a judgment about a deck um sometimes seeing it have some more success should make you kind of second guess a little bit maybe about your previous um your previous assumptions of something and the big thing that i saw different in this list that compared to every other list of cloth i've I've ever seen is this one plays path to the peak i don't know how much of a difference that makes in your guard for and charizard matchups but it's definitely got to help more than it hurts for sure so especially uh, people aren't anticipating having to play around it exactly maybe that's the missing piece for cloth the whole time was just putting a couple paths to the peak in there right like (laughs) that could be the difference maker town store is just so good in this deck i feel like so it's feels a little bad to give that up but yeah, more uh, if there's a little less like lost vacuum in the format maybe you don't mind it as much because sometimes like i mean back when charizard lists were all playing two lost vacuums in their list i guess most of them still are right i'm thinking of like the counter catcher most people have just one counter catcher now um yeah. but you know when people are more aggressively like lost vacuuming your booster capsules like you need to find it every single turn the deck doesn't work if you don't have that yeah yeah exactly for sure so <clears throat> Oh. But yeah, cool to see. I mean, it's always fun to see like a little bit, you know, lower tier of a deck, you know, have a good run at a tournament because um, I mean, the deck is like not terrible, right? Like you wouldn't you wouldn't choose to play it for a tournament as well and you wouldn't recommend someone choose to play it. But, you know, I mean, it's a meta deck. Though. Pokemon, well, it's just you know? outside the meta. I don't think like I yeah. would I put I mean, a tier list together tomorrow. <laughs> this is like the perfect example of like a tier three Pokemon deck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. It's a deck that a little outside the meta, but yeah, it's, it's not still, something it's you're like good. expecting to play against, but it's like it can hold its own, right? You know, this thing, this a deck can attack for a ton of damage on the very first turn of the game, right? This deck can be really aggressive, you know, three bosses orders. Um, so like, you know, there's a lot of setup decks and stuff like that in the format. If, you know, someone gets like one Ralts in play turn one, that thing is probably getting KO'd pretty reasonably, right? Yeah. <laughs> also i think uh Roar moon was the most popular deck in day two so it may be always oh, tied with oh actually it was tied with garvor and tina so um that's probably a pretty good matchup for cloth as well like Roar moon has been pretty popular it was the most popular deck at the utrecht special event yeah um it did go against one of its hardest matchups in top eight against juan i believe juan took game one but did not draw very good in game two and three um juan was just playing guard for the only thing i'll mention about we could look at juan's list real fast and just talk about was just the double collapsed is interesting i just said i don't think i've ever seen two collapse in a guardy list i don't know what the real strengths of that are finding it more consistently could be the biggest reason um but honestly that should make the cloth matchup that much easier because the only way it would get easier is if you played turo because cloth electrode can't want to ko a guardy ex 
So if you can just like attack with the Guardi X and then Turo it, the price trade starts to fall out of favor pretty quickly for Cloth Electrode. Yeah. Uh, but Collapse can effectively do the same thing, especially after a Mirage step. You have enough Guardi pieces in play to be able to just kind of switch out between your Guard Fours. So, um, but yeah, uh, did uh, did lose to the Cloth in the top eight. And that's also like another strength of a Cloth deck. I think I would say Cloth is probably a slightly more consistent deck than Guard Four overall. Um, and waste one final uh, one final standout deck, maybe the least surprising of the. The three there, the Palkia, of the Cloth, Control winning. And then there's the Entei, Entei Iron Valiant, getting another top eight. This Maybe it's the second top eight overall. And uh, um, I, I was kind of praising the Tyler Matthews build from Knoxville. I believe yep. this is probably inspired by that. The B-Barrel, the Moltres, um, kind of... Very uh, similar. Yeah, the Tyler Matthews build. Not quite the exact same 60, definitely some differences, but um, I believe probably inspired by Tyler Matthews. And yeah, it's uh, back in the the... Top eight, the Entei is. I actually think this deck like, has like a pretty good Roaring Moon matchup. I think you're definitely favored against Roaring Moon. I actually don't. I actually think like your Tina matchup with the B Barrel. I don't know if it's favorable, but it's definitely better than it was before B Barrel. So I, I don't. know. There might be more to Entei. This might be one of those decks that's kind of like underplayed right now, to be honest, for how good it is. Yeah, probably so. Right. Uh, and yeah, this is basically just Tyler Matthews list. It's like just a couple card changes that are kind of minuscule. There's no heavy ball. There's a third Entei. Um, there's no Serena, but there's a second boss. There's yeah. only one future booster capsule. Um, and in place of that, it's an, uh, and there's also one less double turbo energy, which actually is kind of a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. but there are the two Arvin, the two Arvin added in here. That's something that Tyler did not play. Yeah. And the other Entei list that also like to kind of like speak on that a little bit for the other Entei list that did make day two was also, very similar to the the Tyler Matthews, but it was a little bit ways down, to, like got 50th place. So yeah, I think if like once again, I think I said this the last time I looked saw and looked talked about Ente, which is like if you're gonna play Ente, like you just there's I feel like there's you gotta start with Tyler Matthews build. Like unless you got some other sauce that is like yeah uh cooking Even, really hard. Yeah. But if you just feel like it is not quite feeling good enough, but you want to keep working on it, yeah, there's no reason to not uh start with the, the Tyler's Matthews build and then go from there. Um and move. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say the rest of the top eight was a pair of Roaring Moons. was still very popular at the tournament, still did very well. Um, I actually didn't see the meta share numbers. Did they share the meta share? I didn't see it either. I don't think they did. Um, yeah, I don't remember seeing the meta share. I guess we could maybe, uh, I mean, Pokestats Live won't have like a great representation of the yeah, day one meta, though, to be honest. In day two, though, we can at least see that there was three decks tied for the most popular in day two, and it was yeah. Roaring Moon, Gardevoir, and Giratina. No surprise there i don't think more moon i guess i would bet was probably the most popular deck of the tournament yeah um and then yeah two of them did make their way into the top eight probably the most aggressive deck in the form most consistently aggressive deck in the format uh both of them were playing catcher pretty heavy catcher counts three and four um one of them was a little bit more tool based had the jelly in there but and the town store but didn't even have any capsules yeah so nothing too crazy on either list but going the catcher route and i feel like catchers is probably correct in roaring moon it's close they don't feel great all the time but when they do hit, it feels like it's worth the trade-off of having those um, less overall like consistent cards as far as like guaranteeing something. The mm -hmm. the chance of the heads when it pays off is just seems worth uh, worth the flip, worth picking up a coin and flipping it. Sure. Yeah, I feel like I like this list right here with the three catchers, the jelly as well. Keep that yeah. kind of option around. Still important for the Charizard matchup, the jelly is so they can't just yeah. tackle you. And for the Tina matchup too, right? That's kind of one of the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big one as well. The big reasons for force it. Them, force them into another Tina if they want to get that KO after the Frenzy Gouging. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then other than that, looking at the top eight, uh, top 16 decks, you know, the Charizard. This is where we see the Charizards and the Giratinas, you know, still decks well represented in day two. Not quite making it into the uh, top eight. We see uh, William Azevedo and Vinny Fernandez, two of the best players in Latin America, both here in this top 16. Uh, Vinicius kinda, as well, Gomez. Yeah, I was going to mention, uh, so uh, 9, 10, and 11 all had 31 match points, which was the minimum amount of match points that someone had going into top cut. I believe it was like a 3-3 three, three split or a 2-3 split. Um, so three in, three out, or something like that for the 31 pointers. Yeah. Um, and a couple more guardies on the... <laughs> On the outside, just like we saw in the last tournament, the Utrecht special event, three guard wars. The only three, the only three point uh, point matchers that were in top eight were that didn't make top eight were guard wars. So two more guard wars right there at ninth and tenth again. 
Um, I don't know. I'm curious to see if that's like a trend we start to see is like the guard wars. I mean, there was one guard war on top eight at least this time, but once again, two more guard wars just outside cut with the same amount of match points as someone who made top cut. And William also as well had that, but had a pretty poor resistance, so it didn't quite make it. But yeah, same same sixty as Ricardo. Um, mentioned that again. <clears throat> and then Vinny actually the... Vinny lost the winning in. I don't remember who Vinny lost the winning into, but was close to making a, a another top eight here playing the Giratina looks very similar to the list he won Charlotte with. It's got the Avery in here, which is something he played. Yeah. I actually don't, I don't know. Is it any different at all? Differences. I mean, it has to be because it's not listed yeah. right here. There's some difference here. What is the difference? Who knows? <laughs> Vinny knows. knows. I actually saw something from him on Twitter. I was going to uh, mention that, yeah. That he posted. This was the first tournament since LAIC in 2022 that both he and his brother played and neither of them won it. Now, granted, the majority of these results are in seniors, but there's some pretty big ones in here. Worlds, LAIC, right? Uh, yep. Pretty big deal. G Gabriel carrying a little bit there with the Worlds. Uh, a little bit, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the, the LAIC dubs. But, you know, Vinny getting the win as a master in Charlotte, pretty massive. Yeah, I feel like that's, that makes up for, yeah, Gabriel has a carry three in a row. Vinny gets a master's dub. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Gabriel comes up just a little bit short, even he still gets a second place, right? Um, yeah, pretty uh, funny that these results are bookended by two second place finishes at uh, you know, LAIC and then another big, you know, regional championships. Yeah, definitely two of the uh, uh, strongest upcoming players, of course, I think in the game right now. Vinny kind of finally kind of proven himself with the victory in Charlotte, you know, like you know, everyone like knew Vinny was a good player, and it's kind of one of those like more like we're kind of waiting for it to happen. But of course, if it never happens, then it never happens, right? But it did happen in Charlotte. And then yeah, Gabriel will probably be a uh, a force to be reckoned with once he makes his way up to the Masters division as well. I don't know how many years in seniors he has left, um, but we'll probably yeah, sure. try and terrorize down there as long as he possibly can. Maybe back-to-back -back <laughs> Worlds victories, who knows? That'd be pretty sick to see. Has that ever happened before at all it in any division? No. I would assume that in juniors or seniors, it would have happened. It's still um, so hard, man. There's still so many kids that play. Yeah, of course, of course. Like it is there's so like at the top level of any of the divisions, there's a there's a lot of really good players. But like it wouldn't have surprised me if it I'm actually like I'm not I guess I'm not that surprised, but I think I would have bet that it would have happened. If you had asked me without me knowing, I would have bet that it would the have happened best at least once. Follow up world's performance that I and that I know of that's at least from Masters. I don't know if there's a better one in a younger division. Um but Jeremy Marin went from twenty uh, 2005 world champion to 2006 top four. That's the Ooh, best. That's the best time ever. Yeah, yeah. There was actually uh, just kind of speaking of just random <laughs> world statistics because I didn't know this one. Um, uh, Kieran Farah and Anil have a podcast. Uh, Gear Shift. Check them out over on YouTube. They oh, did, you uh... watched this week's episode because you were in the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it got mentioned to me a couple times, so I did watch it. it. Got mentioned to me more than a couple times, so I did watch the episode um the statistic that i found most interesting was uh sammy sakum has the most world's top eights at five which yeah. is that's a lot that's a lot <laughs> that's, that's a, lot. a lot sammy is um, a name that doesn't get brought up enough in those like discussions but it's just because it's like recency right like you know his name hasn't yeah. popped well up he's and... like it's like there's yeah, he hasn't played anymore as much. I actually uh, bumped into him at UIC, last UIC. So he's he's still showing up here and there. Yeah, he got day two at the last um, UIC. Yeah, I played against him round. I literally played against him round one of the <laughs> UIC. <laughs> That's sick. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, it's a little bit like, but that he he's like an old old name. You know what I'm saying? Like it's almost yeah. like it feels like there's like three eras. Like he's the way back era, and then there's kind of like the in between era, and then now we're like the modern era of. Uh, of yeah, Pokemon. his his when was his last top eight? It would have been like long time, 2011 or something, probably 2010. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been. Uh, but it was like he top eighted like 2007, 2008, 2000. Like he all of those years, he made top eight of worlds. Yeah, yeah, and like I think the one tournament that has consistently been close to about the same in in difficulty, the game has definitely gotten harder. Um, and I don't think like whenever people say that, I don't think it's ever like we're never discrediting like victories in the past to now, but. Yeah, I mean, I think it's harder to win a regional championship or a national championship or, or ICs now than it was back then. But it's like a regional wins, a regional win, an IC wins, an IC win. If you won 10 back then or 10 now, 10 wins is 10 wins. But Worlds is has the one thing that I think has stayed relatively similar in like difficulty across like all generations, all eras of the game is like the one thing. Because it is like 
similar size of players, the best players from everywhere, and everyone puts in that little bit extra effort at the World Championships, you know? Yeah, for sure. And for, like, a long time, that was, like, the only tournament that, like, the majority of the player base was in North America for, like, a long, long time. And so that's, like, what influenced the meta the most. But the World Championships every single year was, like, the one shot for all the European, the Latin America, the Australian, like, players from wherever to, like, really show up, make a name for themselves, from Japan as well, like, back then, like... Yeah uh you know the, like it was like just two separate worlds really like japan had their tournaments they were doing their thing and then north america had their tournaments they were doing their thing right unless you uh, like knew someone in a different region the information was like you yeah. just didn't know anything about what's going on anywhere like it would like you'd hear about yeah you'd like hear stuff as it like happened but like that especially like deck lists or anything like that you'd like hear archetypes that did well and in other countries and stuff like that but like decklist or something like that would rare if they ever got like shared or made their way around unless it was like put in an article or something or if you're in a certain facebook group or yeah. a message board um but yeah different uh different times yeah but i thought that was like a, a pretty impressive stat the eight or four, five top eights at worlds is uh it's a lot definitely a lot where did you end up on the list uh third they put me third on the list it's pretty good man it's pretty good you got any thoughts or feelings about that? No, not really. <laughs> I mean, that's I'm that's fine with me. <laughs> I don't really ever like write. I don't really ever rate myself. I never like think about it like that. So, I just want to play Pokemon and uh, see where it goes. Well, we did make some predictions heading into the Goyanya Regional Championships. Let's recap those and see how we did. First prediction that we made was: Will anyone make day two? With Tord Box, of course, Tord's ridiculous Urshifu, Pidgeot, Metacham, Intellian, Charizard deck that he played to a top eight finish in Utrecht. Did anyone make day two with it in Guayana in just one week's time? The answer was no. And that is what we both predicted. We didn't think anyone would pick it up. Yeah. And uh like not even like not even like someone who like plays something similar. I'm pretty sure no one even like Yeah. There's nothing even now, close to it. A more interesting question will actually be, you know, with more time. Yep. Will someone pick it up for, for Vancouver in a couple weekends? I think we will. I think we'll see, like, at least... I, I don't know if they'll make day two. I think we'll see a player well, sure. make it, play it, though, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, it sounds like it's just, like, a really... Yeah, it's kind of, it sounds like it's, like, a ton of fun to play, to be honest. Like, and especially, like, playing it, like... If I didn't, like, take my the tournaments I went to as seriously, or even with, like, towards deck specifically, if I had more time to put in with it, like, I would consider bringing it to Vancouver. But, like, my process with my group and then... um the idea of you know trying to wa want to win with how little I put into tryhard testing kind of leads me to having to play, um, or not be able to like just be able to be like eh, I'm just gonna go ahead and play this deck at this tournament you know, um, and pick it up. Uh, if I took the game less seriously, I probably would just like pick up towards deck and play it at Vancouver with like zero games played, but um, and I'd be like content with whatever my outcome becomes, whatever my outcome is. You're taking Mew V Max on one last ride. That's my prediction. <laughs> It happens. It happens. I don't think that'll <laughs> happen though. Mew V Max is a pretty mid play right now. <clears throat> we'll see. Um, we made another prediction of who would the highest placing Chien Pao be, or not who would it would be, but what would that placement be? Who would make it the farthest with Chien Pao? Azul predicted the finals. I predicted top eight, and we did kind of split the difference on this one with Ricardo getting the top four finish. Yeah, I know. It was so. So close, so close. <laughs> Almost got there. Had an interesting series in the uh, the top four against against Marco. And then our last one: Will Mew make it into the top eight? Azul said no. I said yes, and you were right, and you were very right. There was only one Mew in all of day two. Am I seeing this right? One Mew in day two. Sheesh, that's crazy. Is that after that's after literally just one Utrecht? <laughs> well, I don't think I had a great. I'm going to Utrecht now. I don't even know how many were in day two of Utrecht, but to be honest, let's see. yeah, let me take six. a look real quick. Statistics six, here: six mu total, six mu in day. No, eight. It was sixth in the ranking. Oh shoot! Yeah, I'm looking at the wrong number. Eight. Yeah, yeah or eight, eight. Eight mu were in day two of Utrecht out of yeah. which isn't like a that many to be honest. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> didn't make it all the way to the finals. Didn't make it all the way to the finals. And got the dub. Uh, and yeah, will Mew make one last hoorah, one last mark on the Pokemon TCG before it is gone forever? That is the question. 
I wonder if Mew would be good in the expanded format. I haven't even thought about expanded in forever, but can you imagine like Mew V Max with Skyfield? <laughs> yeah, you could do some Genesect, interesting stuff. I think no I've actually weather. now that you mentioned, I think I've played that. I think I played I played expanded Mew, I think. Well, there was like this Meloetta deck that Frank Persick made, right? That had like uh it was like a Meloetta um Turbo deck. Did that play Skyfield? That might have played Dimension Valley, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Wait, what what deck are you talking about? The It was like a Meloetta fusion strike deck in expanded. Oh yeah, that I think that played yeah, that played the Dimension Valley. So you could just like only lose one fusion for your attack every time. Yeah. Every and you turn. would just special charge the fusions back to your deck. That's the yeah. deck I played. That is the deck I played in Expanded or tried to. Got it. Yes, Expanded is definitely just like a pile right now. The whole thing. <laughs> it would be kind of interesting though. Like I'm not I don't want this to happen, but it would be kind of interesting if there was one expanded tournament. And then it would be like a bunch of minds in the game that haven't even thought about this massive card pool of cards in like three years except like for everyone Stefan's grinding yeah, right Stephane now <laughs> Stefan would be all over it Stefan would just be leagues ahead of everyone right? I know we'd have a lot of but it would be so today. interesting to see what would happen if like you just threw this card pool at people that no would... one has even thought about for for years I think for where I have to assume that we're for where expanded is at right now I would assume it could get to the point where my fear, of course, like the, the, I guess the worst possible scenario is that the, the format is literally just a coin flip. And then you go second and just combo and it turns and the game's over. Yeah. Um, or first, I don't even know what's possible going first, to be honest, but that's like my, that's what I would assume it is like. I could be wrong. I would like to be wrong. Um, and I think expanded existing is fine. They should be more aggressive about banning stuff. And I think that would like solve, like if they had just been more aggressive, about like, if there was stuff, expanded we'll, regionals, would you still play in them? Uh, as long as it's like decent, like I would, I, I don't think it was a good to, format. I don't think I have enough time to take expanded seriously and standard and content. So I would just like play the best deck. <laughs> and I, so I would just become a best deck bot and I would just play the best <laughs> expanded deck for every tournament. And then for standard, I would try and get more creative. Cause I just don't think I have enough time, uh, especially with how much time I'm trying to devote to like content and stuff. But I say that, but you know, I've kind of talked about recently about the idea of the world tour next season. So who knows what's going to happen? I do plan on going to try and go to, Let's Sweden. go, Azul, dude. Uh, I, I would. It would be so sick to see Tryhard Azul. Uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe for at least for one year. Um, it would give. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm. It, would, it wouldn't be hard to convince some of the other squad to get involved uh, as well. I mean, so I mean, just be like if the rest of the gang is kind of down to be honest, because doing it like alone, it would be. It I mean, would be I not would... fun to do by yourself for sure. Yeah, but I'm sure I could like find people to like, you know, it'd be it, would, it could kind of go back to like the old days where I would, you know, you know, every other event, maybe I'd be like rooming with someone else and testing with someone else. Like that's the way the game kind of used to be for for me and yeah. the way it is for like a lot of people still. And I feel like most people I feel like even then the game's kind of developed past that a little bit. But like, you know, I would go with rooming with like my local people for one event and then the next event, you know, I'd maybe even meet someone at that event and then I'd room with them at the next event and I'd be testing with from my locals to uh, the people I just met and so on and so forth. So um and i know so much more people in the game right now that i'm I'm sure i could like you know especially like international stuff especially if you're doing like the... you know australian or european tournaments and stuff yeah like... but um uh, but i i think ideally it would be good to just get the gang down on the same page to want to do the world tour next year and i i think i kind of want to give it a shot at least for one season you know it's like not the it'd be so sick yeah it'd be the end to kind of make put content on the back burner a little bit, maybe try and do some kind of more travel vlog type content as well. It would still be there for you, right? Yeah, you of know. course. And I would still like, as like, you know, I, there would be breaks where I come back and, and stream consistently for a couple weeks or so. Something th I'm thinking about for sure. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Well, so I think that's all we have scheduled this week. You got any other thoughts, anything else you want to say to the people? No, I think that's it. Go ahead and close this out. Well, we appreciate everyone as always for listening and supporting us here on the Uncommon Energy Podcast. If you want to stay up to date with what we have going on, the best place to do it is over on Twitter. You can follow myself at Chip Ritchie. Azul is at Azul underscore GG. You can follow the podcast at Uncommon underscore Energy. Also, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, a rating, a review, all those things. As always, they do help us out a ton. Yeah, appreciate the support <clears throat> as Always no major tournaments this weekend, I guess, to wish anyone luck at. So uh, good luck if you go to any locals, playing online tournaments, whatever it might be. And then we'll catch you all next Wednesday, 7 a.m. Eastern.